our next important uh, topic is you know uh, knowing about the how to calculate position of a body in space so sometimes how to calculate the position of a body if it is moving you know uh, or if it is having a translation motion and in the other case we need to find out the position of the same body when it is when it has reached that position using certain types of uh, rotations so we need to calculate these two uh, using the vector analysis why because for example this is the scara robot so this is uh, specifically mentioned in the ies syllabus so this is very much important so for if i take this scara robot and uh, i want to find out the direct kinematics and the inverse ki inverse kinematics of this particular robot what is the direct kinematics for this one so this is the end effector and this is the link 1 and 2 and link 1 and 2 are uh, rotating uh, with respect to each other and this is a uh, rotating about this axis and uh, link 3 is again rotating with respect to link 2 about this axis and uh, this is a cylindrical joint this link 4 is the cylindrical joint which is at the end and this is this can rotate about this one and, uh, as well as move up and down so this is the end effector and uh, finding out the position of the end effector with respect to the base or the origin for example this is the origin is uh, called as the direct kinematics so how to find out that we will see as we move on to deal these uh, direct and inverse kinematics for the robots whatever robot you take and especially this uh, scara robot so to find out this one so if i want to go or if i want to shift my coordinate axis from here to this point then i need to know how to represent or the how to know this point with respect to this one using the vector analysis and again i need to go from here to here and then here to here so to execute all these steps we need to have a basic understanding on the vector analysis so that's why this topic is important here so the, uh, in the space so i have a travel from a point o to p what is the point o here i have taken some reference point then i called it as a origin o so from origin o i went to point p so i want to measure this distance from o to p so how to measure distance from o to p so generally if we have a rope or a tape you hold uh, you know at point o and you just reach the point p and measure this one okay that's a, as simple as that isn't it but in a reality it's not that simple right because in some in some other case i may go in this direction and some other case i may go in some other direction so there are infinity number of possible directions out in <coughs> available to move in those directions and each and every time we can we cannot simply carry the tape and measure these things but instead if we have a standard <coughs> but instead if we have a standard uh, measurement system here then automatically we can calculate the distance of this uh, moved point so that's why we came up with the three dimensional in the space we have a three coordinate system so what does it mean so in this direction we have a coordinate x and uh, perpendicular to this we have a coordinate y and perpendicular to these two for example if i consider these x and y in the same plane and uh, if i rotate my right hand from uh, x to y in this direction then the thumb indicates the z direction so if i take x y in the plane of this paper then z is like this so so z is like this here this is a z direction so always we follow the right hand thumb rule so i defined three coordinate axis what does it mean that means always i can calculate the distances along these coordinate axes so i know distances along these coordinate axes so what now what i want to relate is wherever you go in whichever direction you go if i can represent the direction in terms of x y z are the distances in term moved along the x y and z then my problem will be solved 
because these are the standard ones and i always can easily calculate the distance moved along these coordinate systems so how to do that now i projected this point p onto the plane xy to the point d and uh, i have drawn these lines in a such a way that uh, this is a uh, perpendicular to the axis oa and uh, this is perpendicular to the axis ob and uh, again here if i join this one this is perpendicular and uh, this line cp and uh, od are parallel and if you observe here pd is equal to the oc so i can say like this so i want to reach this point using the known distances instead of unknown distances because every time i cannot carry out you know rope to measure this distance but whereas i know that distance on distances distances on x y z axis where because these are the standard ones i know you know what is the exact distance at any point so if i can reach this point by traveling either along the axis are parallel to this axis then i can easily calculate the distance of the b from the origin so now what i do is i just started my travel from origin towards a so now i am traveling on the axis a so i reach up to a so now i travel a distance let's say small a okay up to point a and then from here i started like again like this and i travel distance up to d but we know this distance is nothing but ob and that is equal to b so this is also becomes b so now i reach up to point to d and now if i go vertically upward then i will reach the point p and i reach you know i started again and i reach point p and what is the distance of dp that is again equivalent to distance of oc and this is the c so what is the total distance here i covered so so total distance i covered is let's say this is the r vector r i can say dr this is equal to r total distance i covered is a along the x axis b along the y axis r the pa parallel to the y axis and again c parallel to the z axis and if i simply write that you know this a plus b plus c then we may get confused why because in some cases we don't know whether a is along the x axis or y axis or b is along the x axis or y axis or z axis so we need to identify these a b c along axis so for that we need to write these in terms of the vectors so generally we know that this is the i a i j and uh, this is the k what are these i j k these are the unit vectors along the x y z axis respectively so now instead of this one i can represent the r vector equal to i moved a distance a along the r the parallel to the here in this case we are traveling along the x axis and uh, again from there i travel parallel to the y axis to a distance b so that's why this is a j parallel to the, and again c into k parallel to the z axis so this this is how we can represent the this point p so not only this point wherever you go always you travel either along or parallel to the axis so that ultimately you will reach the final destination so if i want to calculate uh, this this can be written again like a p in terms of x y z coordinates is nothing but a b and c why because here x is a a y b and a z is a c here. and if i want to know the distance between o and p then that's a simply r equal to modulus of r equal to square root of a square plus b square plus c square you now how you calculate this one? this one in the 2d if we have two points like x1 y1 and uh, x2 y2 then what is the difference between these two that is a uh, nothing but square root of x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square here in this case p is a abc 
and o is 0 0 0 so here will, it will become square root of a minus 0 whole square plus b minus 0 whole square plus c minus 0 whole square that means finally this is the a square plus b square plus c square 